You might know it as dots and dashes, or maybe pigs in a pen, or perhaps la pipo pito, la pipito, la pipo pito. But whatever you call it, I'd be willing to bet that you've played the dots and boxes game. It's that game where you take turns connecting dots, and the person who completes the most boxes wins. Well, today on the studio review, we're going to be playing that game IRL. So instead of a piece of paper, we're going to play on a one square mile section of city streets. And instead of drawing, we're going to be running. The map for today's game is a small town called Buena Vista, Virginia, which isn't too far from where I live. It also happens to be laid out in a near perfect grid. The Dots and Boxes game is 1v1, so I'd like to introduce you to my competition, my friend Mike. Mike is a doctor of physical therapy who's currently training for an Ironman. And if you don't know, an Ironman is 2.4 miles swimming, 112 miles biking, and then 26.2 miles running. Mike will be facing off against me, and as some of you know, I once attended a scouting combine for the United States Olympic bobsled team. I wasn't selected. I also wore a shirt from Mike's PT clinic just to psych him out. They say that competition is 90% mental, right? Now normally you take turns completing lines, but to make this just a pure test of endurance, we'll have one hour to cover as much ground and complete as many boxes as we can. The tricky part is that we won't know where the other person has run, and the first person to encircle a city block claims it. That means we could spend a lot of time running around city blocks the other person has already claimed. And we won't find out who won until the end of the hour when we compare our maps. Before before we started, we each shared our strategy out of earshot from the other. Okay, Mike is by far the better runner here, so I think the victory for me today has to come from one thing, and that is strategy. The strategy I have coming into this is more along the lines of having no strategy at all. Fortunately, I have a little bit of a home field advantage. I have no idea where we are. I've kind of been studying the map of this town for the last week or so, like cool running style. And I think I know how I'm going to maximize the number of city blocks I can get without backtracking or repeating the same streets. And I think if I just never stop moving, that's probably my best bet. I'm not in the best long distance shape of my life. I'm hoping in the tortoise and the hare situation, I can reverse the roles. And I guess my big goal is to not fall asleep in the middle of all of this. But we'll see. First, Mike and I performed the customary dots and boxes handshake, a gentleman's agreement. and then the hour began. We both started from the same intersection towards the center of the board. A couple things to know about the map. All the main streets are named after trees, while all the cross streets are numbered. As you might have guessed from the mountains in the background, it gets significantly hillier the closer you get to the top of the grid. I mentioned earlier that it's a near-perfect grid, and that's because of this little culvert that runs diagonally through town. We're allowed to cross it to complete a box, but it's just not the most energy-efficient route. I knew the first few minutes of the game were going to be crucial, so I went pretty hard right out of the gates. Oh yeah, I'm cooking. I started off really fast so that I could claim these first few blocks right here. Might need to slow down. While Mike was taking a more traditional latitude and longitude approach, I got to work with this zigzag pattern I devised. I think my strategy at this point is I'm going to run like 21st to 18th. What corner did we start on? You're like two blocks away from it. Back and forth, jumping onto the next street. Once I get to the end, I'll turn it up, start going perpendicular, go from there. Pretty quickly, we had our first several run-ins. For some reason, I got really nervous that he was about to claim this box, so I turned on the jets so that I could get to that intersection first. Just ran into Mike, went way too fast to kind of pass him. Make sure I claimed a square before he got there. It may have been a mistake, I'm pretty tired. We're only like 10 minutes in. I do have like six squares claimed though, so that's good. Holding 6.30 pace. Probably a bad plan to start. See how long it holds on. And here's where Mike's unfamiliarity with the area comes to my advantage. I can only assume he meant to go the same amount of blocks on each trip back and forth across the map. Unfortunately, I got distracted with my last video. End up on 23rd. I'm really only supposed to get to like 20th or 21st. So just call some extra credit. Meanwhile, I was getting out to an early lead, but I was also wearing myself out. Doing really well on squares, but really tired. It's only been like 15 minutes. Still have 45 minutes to go. I'm drenched in sweat. Let's see if I can slow down and get that heart rate down. Successfully bobbing and weaving, saying hi to neighbors. Car's still following me, can't shake her. But, plot twist, there's a ravine that I keep falling into. Here's what I'm talking about. Just running through a ravine. 
We passed each other a couple more times as I was completing my 11th and 12th boxes. Uh -oh. I already got like 10 miles. I also keep seeing Sam. Well, actually, speak of the devil. There he is. So, might have to alter the plan a little bit. It's getting suspicious. Just passed Mike again. I think he's doing some sort of all horizontals, then all verticals first, as opposed to my squiggly squid method. I'm nervous. He's fast. Mike claimed his first box about 22 minutes into the game, and even though he was 13 boxes behind me, his method was about to start paying off big time. And even though you can see the score on your screen, just a reminder that Mike and I had no idea how many boxes the other person had already completed. Across town, I ran into a slight wrinkle in my plans. This school takes up two city blocks, so that is not good news for me. For whatever reason, that like really threw me for a loop and it took over five minutes to get back into my original pattern. I just hit the border of the map. I'm at 25th and Magnolia and it's only like halfway through, which means I'm gonna have to double back and get to the other side of the map to get more squares, which is so frustrating. Poor planning on my part. That school really threw me off. I don't know how I didn't see that coming. I think I'm gonna need to repeat a street in order to continue my square pattern. So hilly over here. And like I said, here's Mike's method really starting to pay off. He was racking up boxes left and right. I finished the streets that have uh, tree names. I've now started my perpendicular quest, running all the number streets. And just as a reminder, once someone claims a city block, it's off the board. The other person can't claim it later in the game, even if they complete the box. I just have to hope that I got out far enough that Sam, who I think is just collecting block after block. Didn't steal these. We didn't realize this until after, but there was one city block that we both completed within a minute of each other. And fortunately for me, I got there first. Back on track. And somehow Mike got a little turned around. I may have made a grave mistake. I think I ran down 18th and then up 19th. And for some reason I'm on 21st right now. So might have to backtrack and go find 20th Street. Things were about to take a turn for the worse for me though because I was exhausted. My pace dropped dramatically. I just hit five miles, about 42 minutes in. Heart rate is still super high. I've got to slow it down if I want to make it till the end. And the culverts were certainly not helping things. I knew that Mike was probably covering a lot of ground that I had already covered, but I just didn't know if my efforts at the beginning were enough. I also didn't know it at the time, but I was completing box after box that Mike had already claimed. Mike was joking about this earlier, but just passed JJ's meat shack and I can smell them smoking the meat for the day. It smells so good. It makes me want to stop and go get something, but like 10 more minutes. I'm just hanging on, trying to, to keep moving until the clock runs out. Abandon all plan. I'm just gonna run until the hour ends. Five minutes left. I haven't seen Mike in like half an hour, so who knows how many blocks he's gotten since the last time I saw him. I'm dying. I just gotta hang on. Four minutes left. I have one minute left. I'm gonna try to finish one more block. I don't know if I can make it. I used to be able to cover a quarter mile in a minute, but gosh. Those times are long gone. I couldn't do it, I couldn't finish that last block. As it turned out, Mike had already claimed that box, so it wouldn't have mattered anyway. Oh, I'm so tired. Now I gotta go find Mike. Mike, on the other hand, was able to finish a box at the very last second. Look how sweaty I am right now. That's all sweat up to right there. It was time to reconvene and determine the winner. Mike ran a total of 8.3 miles with an average pace of 714, while I ran seven miles with an average pace of 839. And after we compared maps, we determined that Mike claimed a total of 25 boxes, and I was somehow able to claim 26. 25. <laughs> 
Wow. Turns out that box I beat him to was a legitimate game changer. I honestly was not expecting to win. And just to be clear here, Mike proved to be the superior athlete by completing 39 boxes in total compared to my 36, but my strategy ended up paying off. It was also a ton of fun. So if you enjoy running and want to try this, I would definitely recommend it. It was a blast. So thanks to Mike for being a worthy competitor and thanks to you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, you can click subscribe down below so you don't miss out on upcoming episodes. I'm actually really close to 50,000 subscribers, which would be a huge milestone for me. But most importantly, just remember that even when it doesn't feel like it, it's going to be okay. I'll see you soon.